From high above, Anandapur reveals itself, a jewel of prosperity and happiness where every day is a celebration of life's endless blessings. Each stroke of color on the earth, a silent prayer for well-being and prosperity, a tradition as old as time preserved in the hands of the artisans. The air resonates with the melody of ancient songs, a call to the heart of Anandapur, inviting all to join in the dance of heritage and joy. In the warmth of the sun, sweetness takes shape, jalebis twisted into golden coils, a delicacy to sweeten the tongue and unite hearts in shared joy. Here, the past meets the present. In the stories of the elders, laughter echoing through the ages, a reminder of the enduring spirit of Anandapur. In the turn of the potter's wheel, life's cycle continues. Clay transformed by patience and skill, each vessel a keeper of stories and sustainer of life. As the day ends, Anandapur rests, bathed in the golden light of the setting sun, a kingdom at peace, its heart beating in rhythm with the promise of tomorrow. In the heart of power, where the echoes of loyalty meet the whispers of duty, lies the throne room, a testament to the king's unyielding demand for adoration. Seated upon a throne carved from the dreams of conquerors, King Arav surveys his court, his gaze a weighty challenge to any who dare oppose his will. In the silence, a command unspoken yet felt by all, worship me above all others, a decree as rigid as the stone from which his throne is hewn. Avinash, the silent witness to the unfolding drama, stands as a beacon of eternal faith, his visage a reminder of the divine compassion that once flourished in the hearts of Anandapur's rulers. For a fleeting moment, the shadows of doubt dance across the king's visage, a silent battle between the hunger for power and the whispers of conscience. And so, in the grandeur of the throne room, a silence hangs heavy, a kingdom's heartbeats tethered to the whims of a ruler, yearning for the warmth of forgotten suns. Beyond the grandeur and the heavy air of sovereignty, the palace gardens whisper tales of peace and devotion, a sanctuary where the soul may converse with the divine. Here, beneath the ancient boughs, Prince Ishan seeks solace in silence, his heart a vessel for the boundless love of Avinash, undimmed by the shadows of the throne. In his repose, a serene defiance, a face of peace where the storms of duty and the echoes of demand cannot reach, harboring a faith as unshakable as the earth itself. Before him, a shrine to Avinash, its simplicity a stark contrast to the throne's grandeur, a beacon of light guiding the prince's devotion in the silent communion of prayer. With each offering, a petal falls, a silent testament to devotion. In these small acts of reverence, the prince weaves a garland of faith and humility, untouched by the crown's shadow. Around him, the gardens breathe, a symphony of nature's harmony, each leaf and petal a note in the song of creation, echoing the prince's prayers into the cosmos. As he rises, the prince casts his gaze forward, beyond the gardens, beyond the walls of Anandapur. In his heart, a resolve as steadfast as the rising sun, a beacon of hope in the looming shadow. And just as the flower unfurls its petals to the sun, so too does the prince's devotion grow, a testament to the enduring power of faith, a single bloom with the strength to transform a kingdom. Within the palace's heart, where golden light dances on walls whispering of power and legacy, a chamber stands ready to bear witness to the clash of wills, a father and a son, bound by blood, yet divided by belief. Seated upon his throne of solitude, King Arav awaits, a tempest of authority and unspoken apprehension swirling in his gaze, the quiet before the storm of words to come. Into the chamber steps Prince Ishain, his presence a gentle breeze against the stifling air of expectation, each step a testament to his unwavering path, one of devotion and humility. Faces etched in the light of conviction, a father's ire meets the calm of a son's resolve. Words, sharp as blades, are wielded, yet met with the shield of serene faith. 
From the throne of a father's disapproval, an ultimatum is cast, a demand for allegiance to the crown above all. Yet from the son, a gentle rebuttal, his loyalty to the divine unshakable. In the clasp of his hands, the prince's resolve shines, a silent oath to the path of righteousness, where the wealth of the soul outweighs the lure of power and throne. With a turn, the king retreats into the shadows of his own making, a back turned on understanding, leaving behind the echo of a bond strained, yet not broken, by the tides of conviction. As night enfolds the palace in its silent embrace, the courtyard, a stage for whispered secrets and hidden intentions, comes alive under the watchful gaze of the moon. In the shadowed corners of the courtyard, King Arav and his sister Dia convene, united in purpose, their faces a tapestry of resolve and dark ambition as the night bears witness to their clandestine pact. Upon the parchment, a scheme takes shape, lines and symbols weaving a tale of treachery, a dark testament to the lengths to which power will go to silence the voices of devotion. With a plan set in motion, Dia departs, her path alight with the false confidence of those who seek to bend fate, unaware of the higher powers that watch in silent judgment. As silence reclaims the courtyard, the night whispers of the deeds that lurk in hearts veiled by power, a reminder that even in darkness, the seeds of defiance and truth find fertile ground. As twilight drapes its cloak over Anandapur, the sacred grove stands silent, its ancient stones a testament to countless moments of faith and challenge, awaiting the newest trial by fire. Drawn by the whispers of an impending trial, the people of Anandapur gather, a sea of faces lit by the twilight's last embrace, their hearts a flutter with the gravity of what is to unfold. In the heart of the grove, Dia summons the flames, her actions precise, a dance with the elements, as she calls forth a fire that burns with a purpose darker than the night encroaching. Before the ancient fire, a prince and a plotter stand divided, the flames a chasm of fate between them, their shadows entwined in the dance of impending trial. In the depth of Ishan's eyes, the flames find their echo, not as a harbinger of doom, but as the testament of a faith that knows no fear, a soul alight with the strength of conviction. Across the fire, Dia watches, her smile a crescent of triumph in the dimming light, blind to the strength that true faith wields against the darkness of deceit. With the final offering cast, the fire leaps skyward, a column of light and heat, a beacon calling to the heavens, the grove a silent witness to the purity of the trial to come. Under the watchful eyes of the moon and the silent grove, Dia steps into the embrace of the flames, cloaked in her conviction and the magic that promises her safety from the fire's wrath. Following her, Prince Ishan enters the fire, a figure of peace amidst the inferno, his faith an unseen mantle that turns the hungry flames into a harmless breeze, a testament to the true power of devotion. In a breath suspended in time, the heavens decree their will. A divine gust steals the cloak from Dia, bestowing its protection upon Ishan, a twist of fate woven by the threads of divine judgment. Stripped of her magical shield, Dia stands bare before the flame's fury, her confidence shattered, replaced by the dawning terror of a plot undone by the very powers she sought to manipulate. Amidst the fire, Ishan stands untouched, the cloak a mantle of mercy around him. Yet, his heart bears no joy at this protection, only the weight of sorrow for the path that led them here. The sacred grove and its silent witnesses stand transfixed, the night air heavy with the gravity of what unfolds. In the dance of flames and fate, a lesson is etched in the annals of Anandapur, of the divine's omnipotence and the folly of hubris. In the final act of her tragedy, Dia is embraced by the fire she sought to command, a stark reminder that those who play with divine forces are but moths to the flame, their ambitions undone by higher will. From the crucible of fire and faith, Prince Ishan emerges, untouched by flame or fear, his spirit purified by the ordeal. In his trial, Anandapur finds its beacon, 
a soul steadfast in its devotion, a prince who walks with the divine. As the first light of dawn kisses the horizon, the sacred grove awakens, its ancient stones bearing silent witness to the trials and triumphs of the night before, a sanctuary of renewal and reflection. In the quiet aftermath, Prince Ishan sits by the dying embers, his gaze fixed upon the remnants of the fire that tested his faith, his heart heavy with the weight of newfound understanding.